my channel. Today we are going to get into my full review and three eyeshadow looks using this new limited edition trio chrome palette from Natasha Denona. So this was a very interesting color story and I really didn't see it coming. I'll be honest with you. This retails for $129. You can pick it up on her website. You can pick it up at Sephora and the packaging is really fun. It does kind of have a shift to it, which I really like. This is one of her bigger palettes. This is one of her more expensive palettes. We're going to get into all of my thoughts and opinions on this, of course, and we're going to get into the three looks that I created with this palette. But before we do, I just want to Thank you guys for your patience with my uploading. I have, um, I just recently lost my uh, grandfather. So back in February, my grandfather on my mom's side passed away and that was very hard for me. He and I were like best friends. And then my grandfather on my dad's side just passed away. So it's just been kind of a, you guys know 2020 has been ridiculous. And so it's been a rough couple of days. I just have to say, whenever I'm going through hardships in life, my YouTube family and the passion that I have for my channel kind of pulls me out of that muck of sadness and, you know, pain. And so I am so happy to be back. And you guys give me so much love and I'm so grateful. So thank you for your patience. We've got a lot to cover, you guys. I mean, during the holidays, you can't really take a week off because there's so many new products that you're like, ugh. Mm. And the eyeshadow palettes, they're coming for 2020. I mean, we have had one palette after another and it's been very difficult to keep up with it. So let's jump into the information about this palette. So this retails for $129. It is one of her larger palettes, uh, which I will get into that in just a minute. But this palette is mostly all mattes except for these three shades down here. So these three shades in the middle, she is calling them a trio chrome, a multi-chrome uh, eyeshadow. So I'm going to get into that and how I feel about that. But uh, I don't know that these are trio chrome. I'm just going to say it right out loud out front. I do not feel like these three shades give you a multi-chrome look, but we're going to get into now, it. So I wasn't actually going to buy this, but I asked many of you guys if you were interested in me buying this palette and reviewing it. And many of you said yes. But for those that don't love color, the nice thing is uh, there are some more neutral kind of toned down. There's a lot of pastels in this palette, which kind of surprised me. Uh, so, you know, if you like pastels, I think you'll enjoy the color story a as a whole. I kind of wish that this palette would have been in the uh, $65 palette form. So if you compare it to like the bronze palette, this is a $65 palette. This palette has 19.25 grams worth of product. This palette has 35.4 grams worth of product. I'm kind of becoming accustomed to these smaller palettes. And the reason why I say that is because now uh, we've reached the level in our love for makeup that we have a lot of palettes. And it seems like these palettes that have a lot of product, we don't go through them. Uh, and so giving us less is actually more because it gives us more variety, but we're not paying these crazy high-end prices for them. Now, you know, that's just Natasha Denona brand based on the larger palettes compared to the medium-sized palettes. I prefer her smaller palettes, the five pans. Those are my favorite from Natasha Denona because they're $25 and they give me something with her quality. Even though you pay more per gram, at the end of the day, it's not gonna go to waste in my collection. So that's so, the information on this palette. Let's go ahead and jump into the three tutorials that I did using this palette. Then we'll get into the swatches and then I will jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into look number one. And kind of my goal with this is to use all three of the trio chrome shades. So I'm basically just gonna do it by row. Like this palette is kind of set up that way where you have all the green shades here up in the top, you have all of the purple shades here on the middle row. And then these are just a little bit more of like a neutral type with this like uh, purple green shift to this trio chrome shade. So I'm just gonna go based on that. I'm gonna kind of follow the color story of the palette. I think it's a little bit easier, especially 
for somebody like me that's just not that uh, gifted with uh, playing with colorful palettes like this is. Let's put on the uh, Trio Chrome shade and I'm gonna grab this shade which is Scarab and I'm just gonna apply it with my finger and you can kind of see a little bit of the shift like right here where I have it. Let me swatch it for you uh, so you can see there's a little bit of a shift, but personally, I'm not seeing a three, like I'm not seeing the trio, which would be three shifts in the shade. I'm not really seeing that in this, maybe more of a duo right here on the lid. That swipe went a really long way. So that's applied and you can see three levels of green is kind of what I'm gathering on the lid. So you can see more of a yellow based green, you can see more of a lime color, and then you can see a little bit of a deep color. So just FYI, uh, it has a little bit of a shift, but I don't know that it's enough to say that it's a trio. That's just my opinion, but we'll see. Okay, okay. first I'm gonna grab the shade Ion, which is right next to it. I'm gonna keep most of that like right out here and I'm just gonna kind of blend this into the crease, kind of build it up. Okay, I'm gonna switch brushes and I'm gonna grab the shade Scrap and I'm gonna bring that right here on the outer corner. Ion is a little bit more of a neon and the shade Vert is a more uh, mustard based kind of yellow. So we're just gonna kinda blend those all together. Okay, so I wanna mention, I'm gonna move on to the lower lash line. I'm gonna put some concealer on, but I didn't get any fallout from the mattes or using the trio chrome shade with my finger. So they have a very, very smooth texture. If you're gonna apply them with a brush and you're going to apply a lot, you might get some fallout. But 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 they're very smooth and so if you apply them with a finger, I think you're gonna have less fallout than you would if you, you know, dumped your brush in there and really picked up a ton and really worked that shade in. So it depends on how much you want to apply, the level of intensity that you're wanting from that shade. So just keep all of that in mind. But just by putting on one little layer, using my finger, it worked great. I just have to say I am grateful for makeup because on Saturday morning, we were, you know, I have a five month old golden retriever, sweetest puppy, and I have a 11 year old Shih Tzu who is, I feel like she's going blind a little bit. Like you can tell, like when you go to give her a treat, uh, you know, she has to kind of find it with her nose. She's not fully blind, but I can tell her eyesight is not near as good as it used to be. And she's always with me. So she's my dog. And she, you know, she's been with me since I got her as a puppy. And so, Anyway, you know how the older dogs try to like snip and bite at puppies to kind of teach them and let them know, hey, you're you're acting too crazy. You need to calm it down. So the golden retriever was playing with my little Shih Tzu and the golden retriever was getting a little bit too riled up. And I was kind of like, calm down. It's okay, Lex. You know, and I was kind of in her face. I'm like, it's okay. You're okay. And she went to bite the puppy and she bit me instead. Now, makeup has covered up most of it, so I have a gash here, a gash here, and then I had this big red mark up underneath my eye, uh, but it's healing so quickly. I mean, this, th today I'm filming this on Tuesday, and this just happened on Saturday. So all of you out there that told me to try the Arnica, it was a game changer. So I started using Arnica 
that night or that day with a cream and the little tablet formula or the little tablet form. Never got any bruise. I am just so grateful. So it's healing up fast and you can't even tell that anything happened to my face. But I will put the image up here on the screen of what I posted on Instagram. It was not a good situation. It was an interesting weekend. So this is a little bit of a harsher line. So I'm gonna grab the shade Vert and I'm gonna grab it on my BK Beauty, uh, what is this brush? 203 brush. This is a little bit stiffer and it can help to really break up those lines. So anytime I'm having a hard time with a dark shadow and it's not breaking up, this is the brush that I will reach for and it really helps to break up that line. And I'm gonna and bring that on my lower lash line. So I'm gonna go in two times with it. And I think I'm also gonna go into the shade Ion and bring that into it just to kind of get a little bit more of that green depth. Okay, I'm gonna take this brush, which is my flat tipped brush. I'm gonna go into the shade Scrap and I am going to buff this into the outer corner. Also gonna bring that on the upper waterline and just kind of give some depth right there at the base of the lashes. Okay, so I'm back. This is the final look for look number one. And I like the way this looked. It turned out, um, I kind of, ugh. so when I went off camera, I went in with my small little brush. This is my, uh, flat definer from Sonia G and I went in to try to kind of fill in this area and when I did it got a little bit too thick right there and I'm having a hard time getting that to blend back out. Other than that I think everything else looks really pretty. So that's it for look number one. Let's go ahead and jump into look number two. Okay, so let's move on to the second row and play with the purples. Let's go into this middle shade right here. Let's go into the trio chrome shade. Let's see how much shift this has. Now this shade doesn't really feel like it has a lot of shift to me. I think the green one had maybe a little bit more of a shift than this one does, but let's see what it looks like on the eye. The shadows are very smooth though. In fact, these apply really easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that same brush, the flat definer that I was talking about in the last look. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in some of the gaps that you miss with your finger. So I'm gonna bring it all the way out into this outer corner as well. Now I did get some fallout from that application. And I'm gonna go into the shade Tungsten. And I'm not worried about this down here because I will be wiping that off because I don't have concealer on. So I'm kind of being kind of messy around there towards the bottom. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into the darker shade, but I'm gonna grab my pencil brush. I'm gonna go into manganese, which is a darker purple. And I'm gonna bring that right here on the outer corner. Then I'm gonna take my blending brush and I'm gonna go into that darker purple. I'm gonna blend this into this outer corner and just kind of deepen things up. I'm gonna go into Red Ox, which is that lighter purple and use that shade to kind of blend everything out. 
Okay, now I'm gonna go into tungsten and I'm gonna bring that on the lower lash line. Once I add this, I can kind of go up here and see where I need to adjust. Uh, sometimes doing the lower lash line can really help you to kind of see exactly where you need to build and, you know, give dimension. But I will say this shade is, looks pretty light in the pan, uh, but it builds really nicely. So I wouldn't say that it looks different when you put it on, but it builds and it does build really well on top of itself. And let's go into manganese and let's bring that right down here on the lower lash line, right at the base. Let's do that right here at the base of the lashes on the upper lash line. So this is the final look for look number two. A thing that I'm noticing is that this green shade is definitely more of a duo, almost a trio, but this shade right here is not. I would say this is no different than a purple shade, uh, just a purple shimmer. So I'm starting to kind of question this whole trio cream, trio chrome thing. But as for now, this is the final look and we're going to go ahead and jump into the third and final look. I'm going to go ahead and wipe all of this off, start over again. So I will be right back. Let's start with look number three, which is the final look. And I am gonna run with this bottom row right here, probably keeping it towards these shades right here. But again, because these three shades are the focal point of this palette being that they're a trio chrome, I wanna put them on first. So just like with the last two looks, I'm gonna put that color on so you guys can see what it looks like before I start blending anything into it. Let's go into the shade Color Flip. This one I would say probably has more of that duochrome, a little bit more of a duochrome. It's a purplish green color. Okay, so this is the first application with the finger. Of course, I got a lot of blending and tweaking to do. So I'm gonna grab this uh, flat definer from Sonia G. I'm gonna place this right here along the edge. Just kind of fixing some of these edges and making sure that it, everything's filled in properly. So this is the first shade that I have applied that really looks more duochrome. So when I look straight ahead, I can see a pink purple shift in the mirror. Uh, this part from here to here is more of like a pink purple. This out here kind of starts to turn a little bit dark uh, because of the where it's sitting on my lid. So this one you can definitely see a little bit more of an effect than you can with the others. Let's go into uh, diatonic first. It's a really pretty peachy color, which I love a peachy color. Then I'm going to go into Garmon which is right next to it. I'm gonna go right over top of it. Now I'm gonna take a clean brush and buff out all of these edges. Let's go into tungsten, that purple shade that we used in the last look, and let's put that right over top, right out here on the outer corner. Okay, now I'm gonna go into manganese and I'm gonna bring that right out here on this outer corner
So I went ahead and put on some concealer and I'm gonna grab the diatonic and I'm gonna bring that on my lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go into Garmon and place it right over top. Then I'm gonna take a small brush. This is the BK Beauty 204. I'm gonna go into Tungsten and bring that closer to the lash line. And then I'm gonna to go to the flat tipped brush and I'm gonna go into manganese and I'm gonna bring that close to the bottom lash line. I'm also gonna bring that color right at the base of the lashes on the upper waterline. Okay, so this is the final look and I didn't put anything on the inner corner. I just figured I would leave it like this and I'm happy with the way that this look turned out. And as far as my lippy goes, I paired it with the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Liner. And then I threw on my Tom Ford Indian Rose. This is one of my favorite shades, especially to wear with these really pretty pinks. So that's it for look number three. Let's jump into the swatches and then I will get into my final thoughts. jump into my final thoughts. Now, first things first, this is just strictly my opinion. I don't know how anybody else is really feeling about this, but in my experience, I do not feel like these three shades, I'm talking about the three shades down the, down the center of the palette, I do not feel like they are trio chrome. And the reason why I say that is because I went ahead and bought one of her uh, chromium liquid eyeshadows. These are, these are so pretty. The amount of uh, dimension that are in these liquid shadows are incredible. So I am kind of, I think a little disappointed. I'm gonna start out by saying I do not really wear the trichromes that much, just FYI. But if you out there are someone who loves those trio chromes that have those shifts, I don't think you're gonna be in love with these trio chromes. And I feel like the whole basis and center point of this palette was the trio chrome. It's named after these shades. So this palette was designed all around these three trio chrome shades. So this chromium, uh, this chromium liquid eyeshadow from Natasha Denona, this is what it looks like. And you can see, like when I'm looking in the mirror, I see that it's green. When I look in the monitor, it's purple. And as you start to shift, I mean, this has a lot of different color stories going on in this trichrome. This is beautiful. There is no thickness to this texture whatsoever. It has a very thin, thin texture, almost like it almost seems like you took one of these thin textured shades right here and you mixed it with like a mixing medium and it gave you a liquid. It's very, very thin and very smooth. And now that I have it on my hand, as I'm running my hand across it, I don't really feel it that much. It's very smooth. And once it's dried, it doesn't crack or anything. I'm just gonna give it to you bluntly. If you were buying this palette solely based on those three shadows, I would buy the liquid. I would not spend $129 
for these three shades. The mattes are very great. They do blend beautifully. They are her creamy mattes, which is great. Uh, that's my favorite formula from her is her creamy mattes. I had zero issues with any of the mattes that I used in today's video. So this is the Divine Rose 2 palette from uh, Pat McGrath. This shade right here is a true true triochrome. It has so many different colors going on in the shade. I mean, it is unbelievable. This right here is this shade. So I swatched this shade. Okay. So you look at it in the pan. I'm looking at it in the monitor. It looks pink, right? So looking dead on at it, it looks pink. This is what it looks like swatched. Now, as I shift my hand, check that out. I mean, it's kind of undeniable that this shade is truly a possible trio chrome shade. I mean, I can see three different colors when it shifts. Let's put this shade up next to it. This one I think is the most chromey look, okay? So here we have this shade. And as I shift my hand, I this shade just has so much more of a shift to it. I will put an image right up here on the screen of the way that it looks, uh, you know, through the camera and taking a photo of it. There are 12 mats in this 15 pan palette. So if these mats are something that you're needing in your collection, then I don't think you'll be disappointed. But you have to look at it and decide, are those trio chromes really trio chromes? Because I don't think they are. Um, I'm curious and interested to hear your guys' thoughts. I'm definitely going to be watching other videos once I'm done filming this, just to kind of get everyone else's perspective on it. That's my thoughts on this. Sound off down below. Let us know what you guys are thinking. Have you bought this? Are you loving this palette? Let us know. I've always said your guys' opinion is just as important as anyone else coming up here on a platform and giving their opinion. Share with us down below how you guys are feeling about this palette. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. Tomorrow, okay, so my Charlotte Tilbury palette, the Fire and Rose, took forever for it to ship, okay? Forever. So as soon as it arrives, it's gonna arrive tomorrow. When you guys are seeing this, that means the day that you guys are seeing this, it will be here. I will be putting that video up right after this one. So the next day, on Thursday, I will be uploading my review of the two new um, Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Formula and the Fire and Rose palette. I will have a lot of comparisons and I will really dive in and let you guys know if I feel like it's worth it. So hang tight for that video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you all in my next video. Love you. Bye.